started. Okay, here we go. It's a post Matthew Salacuse, Chris Buck episode. It's like, we're all, <laughs> it's the, it's like the Sunday after Lollapalooza. <laughs> the endorphins are all spent. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be a really fun episode. I think we're going to have a pretty good turnout because uh, everybody is hoping that their pet was selected. <laughs> Everyone's hoping that their pet is going to get drawn tonight. So, I mean, who wouldn't? Like, you could have yeah. like over 100 people drawing your precious baby, fur baby. I think that pet night might actually beat out famous photographer night in terms of attendance. <laughs> Just Yeah, I think the only thing to compete with is famous photographer's pets. Famous um, <laughs> yeah i almost i almost hit them up to be like you guys want your pets drawn but um maybe another time so all right i'm gonna get this show going because we started a little late Do you guys like that new new part of the illustration? Yeah, there's like a, a hint of beatboxing to it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right. It's another Thursday night. Timmy, I'm, All right. I'm hustling here. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. You're overwhelming me with your joy, Timmy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, nobody is allowed to be upset that their pet wasn't selected for tonight. Yes, first rule. And Timmy and I already decided that we had so much uh, interest in it that we will probably be doing it again next week or the week after, one of the two. Yeah, um, most likely next week. It was there was so much fun stuff submitted, and um, thank you all for doing that. Thank you all for being here tonight. We are uh, doing pets, and uh, yeah, compete with that piece of photography right there. Look at that. Um, that's pretty nice. <laughs> um brookie right yeah that's brookie right. the nice one Aww. this this is timmy's dog that does not bite me um <laughs> that's part of the trivia yeah how many how many <laughs> times has my dog echo attacked john <laughs> only one official Let me count bite. Ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah all right so um we are doing pets tonight and i tell you piper Pretty damn cute. <laughs> really adorable. Uh, I, don't th I don't think we can go wrong with Piper there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to this one. Um, so I have my menu. Uh, Charlotte, thank you for sending photos of Piper in. It will be a fun one. Uh, following Piper, and the, this is the first 20-minute most. The second is Chloe. Uh, Corey Gooch submitted. This is a great photograph. Um, I really like the organization of values. Um, a fun, a fun one to, to, to make a painting or a drawing of. Um, really nice piece of photography. Interesting point of view and really nice lighting. Really subtle. I like it very much. Thank, thank you, Corey. And then following that is Nutella. <laughs> Love the name. Love the name, Xander. <laughs> um, uh, this was, I think, the last photograph submitted today. Um, and I kind of waited, and I'm glad I waited. Uh, one of the last, and the la it was one of the last few that was submitted, and um, or at, at least that I looked at. And I think it's 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 quite terrific. Really well done, thank you. And then you can do either either Nutella or Duke BBQ, um, and um, I don't know exactly what Duke is. If that is a, it's a rat. It's a rat. Um, it's a really, adorable rat. Yeah, I got uh, some rat. I got some rat trivia too. It so. is ratatouille, right? I mean, it is. <laughs> ratatouille. It, it, I mean, it already has the characterization. I love it. He's um, a Dumbo rat. Yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, Elena, for for submitting. So, uh, in between poses, please post your work to hashtag illustration isolation 
And we are going to have a little bit, it's going to look a little bit different tonight uh, when we go through those. Um, um, we'll see. We'll Don't see worry how. about it. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not worried about it now. You can worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, everybody, thank you for joining us. And let's go ahead and get, yeah, get drawing. Um, yeah. For anybody wondering, I dropped the uh, link to these photos in the chat. So if this is your first time joining us, follow that link. You can grab the photos there. Um, please post your work throughout the night. Uh, John just shared the info, but we'll, we'll remind you we're doing 20 minute poses. So at the end of that, post your work to Instagram using hashtag illustration isolation and add visual arts passage. And, uh, yeah, just please draw with us. Um, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, and most importantly, I'm going to drop a link to if you want to join the chat because we don't use uh we do not use uh zoom chat uh for good reasons <laughs> um for security stuff so if you want to talk with us connect with other people that are in the room join our discord server uh elena if you could upgrade people to illustration isolation uh in the intro channel that would be awesome but uh if not, I'll, I'll try and tackle that too. So how's everybody doing? Well, I'm hanging. Let's put it that way. All right. Yeah. Doing all right. Good, Bill. Bill, you've been running across, uh, doing your best impersonation of Forrest Gump, running across yeah. North Carolina. Yeah, but, you know, I, I've been thinking about Forrest Gump, and I'm thinking there's no way, there's no way I would ever run across the country like that. But, um, uh, but I'm getting to the point now. I need a new pair of shoes. I, I'm realizing. Oh yeah, that's always big to recognize. Like they say, it's it's like every 300 miles, but that, that goes by really fast. I don't know. It's, really fast. it's just, um, you know, you, when you run, you, at least on dirt and different things, you really start to be sensitive to how the surface that you're running on reacts to your foot and how your foot reacts to the surface. And, um, you know, I could tell they repaved a section of a trail just because it felt different. Um, but do you run with your eyes closed? <laughs> I was just gonna. Wait, I was just, I was just gonna. I was just gonna ask if I'm just imagining a bunch of deep footprints in wet concrete. <laughs> yes, it's a very zen kind of running, you know. <laughs> I I met this guy years ago, and it's when I was doing a lot of running, and this he he had. I realized he had not been running all that long, but he was telling me how, what I needed to be doing. And, and so I was, and I'm listening to this guy and he tells me, he's, he's showing me the, you know, the toe shoes. And he said, Oh, this is, this is it. Everybody's using these to run in. And I'm like, you know, I'm running races like every weekend and I never seen anybody running these shoes. Hmm. And, and he started, and he gets really, you know, really, really, kind of aggressive about it and I finally said hello so so tell me what what's your uh, schedule running like each week he goes well I'm running four four days a week now and I'm up to about 12 miles a week and I just said okay done <laughs> it's enough of a talk uh I don't I don't need you to be telling me what to do when you're just learning when you're just starting to run like how many miles were you running a week when you were when you were getting you know explained um uh, up to 40. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Timmy probably did a lot more than that in school. Um, uh, I did, but that was a really long time ago and I would never run anything like that again, you know, but you know what, John, not that much more than 40. I don't know. I mean, I think my like 50, of, 50 or 60 at the height of it, like the very height of it, you know, the, long, the longest training I ever did you know, four marathons. I, I only ran the first marathon. I ran, I only ran 18 miles before and, um, at, at, on my long day, but 
so I did three days. So 24 and what's 24 and 18. Um, yeah, that was six extra miles. How'd that go? Yeah. That, what is that? 42 uh, or 52. Um, yeah, I guess I did run over 40 miles. I'm running about 20 miles a week. That's, that's awesome, Bill. That's, that's great. Yeah. A lot more than I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, just because I've got my segments, I'm I'm organizing my segments for tonight. Maybe we could start off with some technique actually on pet night. What what's it like drawing an animal versus a, like a portrait of an animal versus a person? Any any differences you might note for people drawing with us? Uh, I'm sure people that do it all the time have a lot a, a lot more to say about it than I would. Um, I kind of look at it pretty much the same especially these guys there i mean this is like a this is like a portrait you know um same thing i start to identify shape first try to figure out how it's going to sit on the page um uh, I'm, I'm angry with timmy right now because when we were talking he was talking i i dropped my pastel and it broke in half and it's really short so now it's his fault <laughs> Uh, looking for excuse i can barely i can barely hold on to it <laughs> I, I was just gonna say john have you ever like this is my level of where the, the degree to which i want to blame other people for things is like when i stub my toe oh, yeah. there's like there's like a deep deep in my mind there's a thing where it's like damn it gianna <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah some therapy for why that. did you put why did you put that table there <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> just, and then you realize that you put the table there <laughs> yeah yeah just, Reina, thank you for getting for pushing so hard to get photos you did a great job um yeah i don't i don't you know i think drawing just about for me just about drawing anything is very much the same i kind of approach everything very in a very very similar way um <laughs> you know we talked about that a lot this morning about the emotional quality that 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 you know that's how i draw i mean it's like it's not about the mood of it the mark making um you know i don't do only measuring i really do is in my head i use a lot of angles but i try to really analyze what i'm looking at and come up with um, you know, to come up with my likeness. And for some reason, I've noticed that the type of drawers, you know, I look at very academic drawers that have, you know, whether it's site size or constructive or however they're pursuing, um, which, you know, can be phenomenal drawers. Um, but, you know, I was, what I made a living doing likenesses of people and to get a likeness of somebody is really an analyzation of what makes that person look like that person. And if you start out with something that's generic, that works for a lot of heads or basic proportions, that type of thing, I never, I never really got, and, I don't, and the people that draw the way that, that do a great job in drawing that way, I don't see them starting that way. I think that they tend to approach in a very similar way that I do is like, oh, what really identifies this individual to look this way? Chris Payne, when he starts, he describes it as, I got to do a gesture of the face. I got to get the feel for the gesture of the face. And, you know, that's different for everybody. I hope that makes sense saying it that way. Oh, yeah. I think you're dot on. I mean, there's things like natural measuring by my eye that I look at, like, with animals, like look at where their shoulders are and where their neck connects, depending upon the animal, like those can sit differently. So I would just look where things connect and where they belong. Like um, what makes this dog so interesting is like, it's got very narrow shoulders. Like the ears are wider than the shoulders. Like little things like that make for a better silhouette. Just seeing where, like I'm still trying to establish the eyes, which are pretty far apart. So like, a, you know, with a human, um, typically an eye is like one eye width apart. Well, this dog is like two and a half eye widths apart. So 
just natural paying attention to where things are lining up uh, always helped me. And then when you get into like pattern fur, I always leave the pattern off initially and just focus on getting the value in and then you can add the pattern afterwards. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but I, I encourage everybody to try to see the overall proportions and uh, the shape of what you're drawing first. You know, uh, you know, one night I was one of the earlier. Ah, I broke another pastel. Oh, my pass, and then I ran into Then I ran. <laughs> Damn it, Timmy! <laughs> Cassandra, this time. Damn it, Cassandra! John, you are John. so welcome. John, actually, somebody asked, like, do you define proportions first or form? Which which order? Uh, form uh, secondary. You know, okay. what I'm trying to do right now is I'm just trying to get a shape. And I, again, I can be real obvious with it. And I, I'll, I'll speed it up a little bit here. Is just, I'll just go down and put a flat tone over the shape of what I'm about to draw here. But I try to get I try to find the overall silhouette and the shape of things first. And then, you know, once you get your shape right and your silhouette right, it's real easy to put everything in the right, put all the features in the right place. Couldn't agree more. So you can do a complete drawing with shape and pattern of light and dark. And then leave form out of it and you'll have a successful drawing. If you, I mean, you're always to some extent dealing with a pattern of light and dark before you're dealing with form. Um, and, and a drawing that, that has the right recognizable pattern of its lights and darks will read faster um, than a pattern, than a drawing that's, you know, well rendered will without a good light and dark pattern. Um, um, and so that that's where my eye goes, you know, I go to the, the shape and then it's the lights and darks and then softening form and, you know, ed, you know edges and stuff is the last sort of the last thing. I'm always thinking about form principles and stuff, but that's sort of the last part that I add. Yeah, that's that's the rendering side of it. And it's so much easier to render. And truthfully, you have to render so much less if you get all the first part right. <laughs> if you get so the shape right. True. If you get the shape right, um, you can let the shape do most of the heavy lifting. Yeah. I am. Um, I found a book the other day um, that had a bunch of photos of, um, um, I think people who live in the desert in the desert part of Africa. And that's very broad because I didn't buy the book and I don't remember the exact places. But I found some reference photos that your dad had used for paintings. And I compared them to the paintings and you can really see how far he went away from the reference but the thing that the thing that reads in them is the light and dark pattern um because they're almost completely flat as images um i mean he changed color he changed you know he, he eliminated things um i'll, I'll send you the photos um you, you if, he, if he were here bill he would say bill i don't work from reference so um, you know, just joking. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> but um, you're 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 greatly mistaken, and I don't use reference. Um, but it was cool to see how much they were changed um, in terms of what he left out, what he, what he put in, the colors. It, his interpretation of what he was looking at. Yeah. It was pretty good at that. And it, so it had, but it had very little, okay. it had very little to do with form and, and almost entirely pattern and shape. 
I can't I can't even hold on to the, the pastel I'm drawing with right now. <laughs> <laughs> a question a question. Oh, a question from Oscar, which was like, how do you how do you all keep it so symmetric with your work? It's not really a symmetric photo. No. Yeah. Uh, well, mine, mine's off. I mean, I, I would guess like balance. How do you, you know? Yeah. Great trick, which this actually does come from uh, the beginnings of a kind of an atelier approach is uh, think about enveloping. And I'll show you real quick. I can even just go straight across. Oops, hit my top of that. But that shape that I drew around my reference, that's probably a lot easier for you to identify if you want to draw that shape first and you know to transfer that shape to give you an idea of what now this is not a very i'm not going to go very far with this drawing anyway but if i wanted to you know think about this this drawing like put these same this envelope around it You know, you're coming up with that same shape. It's a lot easier to identify it in real simple graphic shapes than it is get into articulating things. Um, it's called enveloping and it, it's very helpful to do. Right now, my, my dog is wondering why I'm enveloping and not giving him a dog cookie. <laughs> <laughs> John, do you ever find yourself doing that or is that like just a good... It's, no, I do. I do it a lot. I should have done it on this. Uh, I'll do it on the next one. Um, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I knew I wasn't going to get, I wanted to focus on the head of this, but also I'm kind of warming up. Wondering why you're drawing another dog. He's very jealous. Yeah. What what do you see in that dog <laughs> that you don't see in me? What's wrong with you? That dog's got like real bulging eyes and everything. Because I don't have bulging eyes. I'm a Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're coming up on our five minute uh, warning for the first pose, everybody. So, I'm so not ready for that. So get ready. I like this. Oh my God, Cassandra, that looks amazing. Oh, thanks. Beautiful, Cassandra. Yeah. I feel like I'm trying to make up for earlier today. I just never got anything like to the point that I was excited earlier. Yeah, this morning was kind of a train wreck for me. <laughs> me too. But people in the crowd were doing awesome stuff. Oh yeah. The only thing I've done well all day is sweat. <laughs> uh, here's another question for you, John, uh, or for anybody really. Do you take much liberty to like add something uh, with a portrait like this as far as like in trying to enhance the effect, say to your background or the surroundings, or do you really just focus on your subject? Um, you know, it's interesting that couple of the drawings we did this morning it didn't even make sense to me this is a really obvious dark object on lighter background mm -hmm. right and so you don't have to work at it very hard because it explains itself with that simple shape design now that's really picture making 101 is is this a light thing against a dark thing or a dark thing against light thing of how it's read and and how we see it and the um, the clarity in this is really easy, but if it was, we're going to run into it on the next picture, um, where there's a it, it's not as clear, uh, then yeah, the thing that I'll can I'll play with the most and move around the most is the value. I'll adjust value so things will read better, you know, and it, which means you might have to put a background in. Um, 
you, you know, you may, there's things you may have to do to, um, uh, to identify that shape on the page really well, because it may not, you know, it may not be a good value structure. But value, you have all kinds of opportunity to, to uh, control and adjust and play with. Right, Cassandra? Definitely, yes. All right. I ruined my drawing when I did that thing. Um, I think it's because you dropped your 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 pastel, so I blame that. It was it was Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> hey Timmy, are we having trivia tonight? How many times do I gotta say we're gonna have trivia? <laughs> yeah, we're definitely having trivia. I I've got some pretty good uh, questions. I've also got some news stories. Uh, the, I'm actually really excited about the news stories because I had a, uh, I think a very high level person chime in via uh, text. Uh, so we've got like a pro insight weighing in on a, a major story, which will be fun. What? Okay, well, I'm excited to hear what that is. Um, yeah, and then Cassandra, there's actually a question from Elena. Um, uh -huh. I had a question for Cassandra about being a mom and an artist. It might be a personal question, but is it hard to do both? And did you did you establish your career first? Oh, that is such a great question. And I'm happy to answer because I feel like it's not talked about enough. Um, so I had a kind of a different career established working for Trader Joe's as a muralist. And then um, I am um, like I got pregnant with twins and my husband and I always we, you know, we wanted to be able to be around our kids more. And we had moms that were definitely home. So I, when I got pregnant with twins, I was worried that all, I would just have to work extra to pay childcare. And I, I didn't want to do that. So I, I quit my job and I thought I was done for a while. And I was just going to focus on being a mom, but all these opportunities popped up. And then it just turned out, I was able to really kick off my gallery career because suddenly I realized I wanted my girls to try for their dreams and I didn't want to be a hypocrite. So they kind of gave me the guts to push myself to, to try more with galleries and stuff. Um, so it's, it is very hard. John and I were actually just talking about how hard it, it is kind of balancing it earlier today, because, you know, you could have a day where you're ready to work and then your kid will throw up down your back like John had. And, and you're just like, all right, my day is changing and you pivot. And so <laughs> <laughs> there's some flexibility yeah. that's required. I had some crazy deadlines last week and my kid got a cold and was home two days and I had to adjust and I adapted and I worked in the evenings when they had gone to bed and you figure it out. So it's not easy, at, but it's also like, it's because of them that I, I got started to head into this career and I'm so appreciative. So, you know, like it, it's give and take. There's some days where, yeah, it could be easier, but I also feel so lucky that it worked out the way that it did and it, it couldn't have gone any other way, but this way for me. So I'm, I'm happy for the way it is, but yeah, it's, it's always going to be complicated, especially with women. Cause when the babies are younger, they, they often look to you more and um, it's, it's okay, but it is tough for sure. I don't want to belittle dads who do an amazing job too, but you know, just for, for me personally, it just, it was a little bit yeah. heavier on my side at the beginning. Well, yeah, with twins, <laughs> <laughs> quite literally. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think this question is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, not to, but <laughs> the last part of it is, how do you reestablish your child's love for drawing and making art after she quits from boredom, yet you purchased all those supplies? Um, start so, using the supplies and then they'll get jealous and say, those are my supplies. And then you're like, oh, only if you use them can you have them then. I didn't think you wanted them. Nothing yeah. like FOMO got my kids more in than this. <laughs> 
Yeah. No, I don't think it's funny that your child has lost an interest in art. I just, I like, I love the like, but I bought all that material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounds like my, my parents went through that pretty often. They're like, but, but we got you the toy. Yeah. All right. That's uh, the end of the first pose, everybody. So we are um, moving on to pose number two. Please, uh, moving on to pose number two and moving in to segment, news segment. <laughs> uh, so uh, please post your work to Instagram with a uh, hashtag illustration isolation and add visual arts passage. We're gonna check out the work at the end of the night. Uh, so please post it. Don't wait till the end. Um, every, every Thursday, people are complaining that their work got missed. It's because they didn't post now. So, all right. Is everybody ready? Can somebody give me the news segment soundtrack? All right. When the queen died, someone had to tell the bees. From London, and I chose this one because it's animal night, and <laughs> bees are an animal. <laughs> <laughs> As news of the death of Queen Elizabeth II reverberated through the world, a headline over the weekend puzzled many on social media. The royal beekeeper has informed the queen's bees that the queen has died. Did bees need to be told about human affairs? Would they have any sort of opinion on the matter? But some beekeepers, backed by folklore, historians say, telling the bees is a standard practice that goes back centuries with potentially grave consequences if not followed. In the 18th and 19th centuries, it was believed that neglecting to tell the bees could lead to various misfortunes, including their death or departure or a failure to make honey. Nowadays, beekeepers may be less likely to believe the ri they risk bad luck, but they may continue to follow the tradition as a mark of respect. So that's it. That's telling, fascinating. <laughs> telling the bees, which in fact, we actually have John and I, when um, when Ted Kinsella took his sabbatical from teaching with us, we actually, our tradition is, is I tell my dog Echo and then Echo tells John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's what I didn't know about. That's pretty great. <laughs> I was waiting for a true or false thing. After no, this isn't trivia, Bill. <laughs> I know, but I just. <laughs> trivia is coming, but not yet. <laughs> I didn't think it was trivia. I just. Yeah, the bees. Are you. OK, so it begs the question. Do you do you all find yourself super to be super? I mean, this is just superstition. Do you think of yourselves as superstitious people? No. No. Uh, I'm trying to think like I don't think I like I think sometimes I, like, I do things maybe I'm not even realizing is more to superstitious nature I only have one and that's knock on wood John you're you're muted but I'm just assuming you have nothing to say about the bees oh no I, I I'm I have superstitions you do sure. oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah really? yeah like like if I planted it enough in your head that like John if we don't if we don't tell the bees about this. <laughs> oh, I would tell the bees for sure. I'd be like, let's just, my, my you know, response would be why, my, my response would be, why not tell the bees? <laughs> yeah. Why not? It's what not could it hurt? It's not gonna, yeah, John, if you don't tell Finn, <laughs> if you don't tell Finn about the latest development with Visual Arts Passage, who knows what could go wrong? <laughs> that's how I kind of think of everything. It's like, okay, if you really, you know, let's just do it just in case. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to hear about John's superstitions. Uh, I've heard enough about it. The bees. Somebody said, I think it'd be funny if the bees stopped making honey in memoriam. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of respect. <laughs> yeah. Maya died of little broken hearts. Oh, that's really, that's like a good, this is a children's book right here. Telling the bees that. that yeah. Yeah those sad bees, you know. Timmy, what uh, about you? Are you superstitious? Oh, very much so, but not in a way that like I believe it, but um 
I, I think that superstition gets twisted a little bit around anxiety because mm-hmm. I think that it's it's definitely like a part of uh, like intrusive thoughts of thinking like um, if, you know, if this happens, that will happen, you know? I oh, mean, that's totally. Yeah, that that's me. <laughs> like like on, on, on disconnected problems, right? Like mm-hmm. things that are like have no connection, but just associating. I'm trying to think of like a good example that's, you know, like if the next car to come around the corner is red, like today is going to be bad. I don't, I don't know. Like things like that, you know, just, a, and that's like, that's like a pretty, I'm trying to think of the term for that, but that's actually like very much connected to anxiety in a lot of ways. So I find that I, uh, I, I find myself being superstitious about that, but then like classic superstitions, you know, like the black cat crossing. Yeah. The road. Yeah. That I, I think that's, yeah, I, I go in for a classic superstition, you know, like if, if a black cat crosses in front of my car, like as I'm on the street, that's, that's not a good day. That's, do you know, do you know how you rid yourself of the, the risk of a black cat crossing in front of you? Uh-uh. This is so, this is so like weird. Uh, you're supposed to spit to the right. That's what I was told. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, and it like it like okay's what happened. It like undoes the black cat energy. <laughs> yeah, it's absurd. But I think you know black what? Cats are adorable. You know yeah. what? It really works. So <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it for sure does. And I mean, like, what's the cost of not spitting? You know, John. Yeah. You know what? What? My, what? What? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, that you know what? It's very similar to spilt salt, right? Mm. You spill or, salt. You know, will you walk under a ladder? Mm, no, no, I would not do that. I would not do that. In fact, I recently had a ladder out, and there was a situation that really, really was begging for me to walk under the ladder, and I was doing everything I could not to go under it, which is just absurd. Um, uh, yeah. Um, but spilt salt, you know, you, I'm, I, I'm assuming this is universal. This isn't just something like my mom told me you, you, you take the salt that was spilt and you throw it over your right shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that one, but not everybody knew the spitting one. So I didn't want to assume anything, you know, I'm joking. <laughs> I thought, Oh, I thought you were being real. Yeah. Um, salt is a good one. Uh, what about a broken mirror? Broken mirror. Oof, oof. My brother uh, helped his buddy um, demo a building for the, his new restaurant. Had mm-hmm. a massive, had a massive mirror on it that they couldn't get off the wall. Really old, and nobody wanted to demo it, and my brother did. <laughs> yeah, he's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> he's. He, he has he, he was care. he was like yeah he was just like get out of here with your trifling like <laughs> your your magic worries you know like yeah oh my gosh yeah. i'm i'm very respectful that other people are super superstitious um so yeah i just don't have that except for the knock on wood thing which i do Oof. I do say that a bunch. You know what? No, the worst thing is when somebody says knock on wood and then they don't knock on wood. <laughs> oh, but I will always adjust it like, oh, knock on vinyl or knock okay. on like laminated yeah. wood. I always adjust it for the, whatever the thing. Yeah. My my parents had bees for a while. They so I'm gonna ask my mom if she ever heard of the, the phrase. I want to I want to know if it's a common thing amongst beekeepers you know? Yeah. Yeah. My parents did not go about beekeeping the the right way though. They got all the gear and everything. And then Mm -hmm. my dad, my dad just found a hive and he, he got the queen and then brought it home and the hive followed him. And, uh, and just like swore, like they were not happy about it. They, they had like multiple tries. It was, it was gnarly, I think. My I'm mom just was like, picturing <laughs> like a Peter Salas Sellers kind of situation where he's like running yeah. home with his like a bee in his hand. It was kind of like that, I think. Like high I stepping it. <laughs> I'm, I'm I don't think Winnie the Pooh. 
there's probably a lot of people bees were not like a like a an ecological crisis at the time we're talking like 1985 so or not okay. environmental crisis or right? i mean say ecological yeah, uh, right. but uh um but uh yeah they're big fans of bees so um yeah so anyways tell the bees all right all right news story number two beep 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 <laughs> Uh, beep, 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 yeah. beep. All right. Can tattoos be reproduced in video games without an artist's permission? An Ohio jury will soon decide. All right. Here's the story. Can a video game depict an athlete's tattoos without permission from the artist who inked the designs? An Ohio federal judge has just ruled that the tattoos in question are in fact copyrighted, but that it's up to a jury to decide if it was fair use to include them in the popular NBA 2K video game series. This is a kind of a long story, but I think it's worth it. Um, the case revolves around six tattoos that James Hayden, owner of the Cleveland's uh, Focus Tattoos, created for NBA players Danny Green, LeBron James, and Tristan Thompson. The tattoo artist registered the designs with the U.S. Copyright Office. Oh, he registered them. Um, yeah, and it, it was used in a lot of games uh, from 2K16 all the way to 2k20 uh and um part of this is that to keep in mind some of the variables here is that these games include realistic playable avatars more than 400 players uh just and uh let me see here going through that the uh the designs which include stars and a lion based on a playing card from a las vegas resort were not original enough to warrant a copyright that's the claim by the defense and that even if they were, their reproduction in the game meets the conditions of fair use. The company does not sell tattoos, so their, their depiction of Hayden's designs did not compete with his business. They also maintain that the tattoos were such an insign insignificant part of the game, they could be considered de minimis, which is uh, basically mean, means uh, trifling matters. Um, yeah, so that's the story. That's a fascinating discussion. Yeah. Wow. Do you guys want to lead with your opinions or do you want me to read Natalie Hall's response? Because I texted her this morning. Those of you who don't know Natalie Hall. Uh, Natalie yeah, Hall I want her is, opinion. <laughs> Natalie Hall is an absolute beast when it comes to tattoo art. Uh, I mean, she's one of those tattoo artists that you have to like book out like years in advance. Um, and so... As, as a busy person, I thought, oh, I'll text her and bother her <laughs> with this news story. I love it. At 8 a.m. Uh, LA time. So, all right. So I sent her, I sent her the story and I said, what do you think? We're going to weigh in on this and sound like idiots. And I want you to follow up with your opinion. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so her response is, uh, that's interesting. I suppose context of the video game and tattoos are important. I can understand, uh, honestly, both sides, but I don't know if it would latch on to the industry as a whole. It would probably take artists getting their work copyrighted as Hayden has, but it would depend on their type of work. So many artists do copy work. So many artists just do copy work and put whatever someone brings, uh, some, whatever someone brings them on their skin. The example, Tweety Bird, a business, mm -hmm. lo business logo, while others create original designs. Uh, but a lot of those who create original work, including myself, rarely think to copyright it as I'd never think it would end up in court. It's a very odd position. I myself would probably never bother, uh, but what that person chooses to do with their life, what that person chooses to do with their life after I've tattooed them is none of my business. And this is so much different than someone stealing my work to profit outright. I would understand a copyright to stop other tattoo artists from copying work, but not for benefits from the client. Mm. Yeah. What do y'all think? I, I thought Natalie's response kind of nailed on the head, which is like, it's, it's, it, once you get a tattoo, it kind of, be, it becomes part of your likeness. Right. I think like, if I agree, um, I, I don't think I could have worded it better than her, but that, that idea that it is the client who is just wearing, like it's on his body permanently and he's in the game and it's based on him. 
So that yeah. is a part of his image now. I understand that they copywrote the image, but I almost feel like that's so that other tattooists don't steal it. But mm-hmm. I, I do think that that's really complicated when it comes to the person that purchased that tattoo and it's on his body. Yeah. What a fascinating th- trial. I have a question about that. Let's hear it. Does, does the video game company if the if the player wears say Nike shoes, does the video game company video game company pay Nike for the use of their logo in their? Um, Probably, but he's something he could take on and off. He can't take his tattoo on and off. Well, yeah. that's, that's the thing. You see, if they're paying if they're paying one entity for the use of their intellectual property inside the game, then they're setting a precedent for paying for the use of intellectual property. Well, you're talking about intellectual property, which I don't know that, I think that that's the debate is, is who owns it? Well, the artist, the artist owns it. So like, does the artist own LeBron James's arm now? No. That's, the, the so like, so owns, like, does, right. here's another question. Um, does the NBA, whenever they air video, uh, whenever they air live games on television, do they now owe all of these tattoo artists for the entire NBA? Do they owe them all uh, residuals for the tattoos being on television? That's a great question. Yes. You think that they do? Because that would never happen. Yeah, they do, but it, it's never yeah. going to, it's never going to. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think so because yeah, it's I disagree the equivalent. On that. Yeah. It's the equivalent of like, okay, say you did the cover of the New York Times and someone is reading the New York Times and is on TV and it's like a live cast. Like, well, yeah. do they owe the New York Times or the artist for showing that image when it's something that was like being used in its element? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a good, it's a, like I said, it's not a, I don't think it's a cut and dry answer. It just, if, if, as decorative art in, in movies and stuff, they pay the they pay for the use of that. You know, right. they, if a, I, if, you know, a live I don't know. Is a different thing, I think. I think when you go into tattooing a person's body, that that person has full control over their body. I, I think that like, so then it's like, is LeBron James not allowed to post photos of himself on Instagram? Right. Like, Cause like, are you saying that he doesn't own photos of his his own likeness you know he doesn't own he doesn't own the reproductive rights to reproduction rights to Uh, the images on his body but it's a ridiculous thing because you can't you know they're on his arm so i think that that's kind of i mean i would understand if like then he took the tattoo and started a business where the logo was the tattoo that's on his arm. Right, or he's selling you know, t-shirts like, with that tattoo on it, but it's just yeah. his. It's his likeness, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's a, maybe that's something that needs to be discussed. I mean, yeah. I don't know, when you buy a t-shirt and you wear somebody's logo on your shirt, you've already paid, and the person who made that's already been paid, so that's sort of covered. I, I think it depends yeah. on prominent a thing it is um i don't think it's an enforceable thing or should be enforced i just think that it's a uh yeah i think it has to do with what other things are they paying for i mean yeah they're um but yeah it's i don't know I, if, I, <laughs> if i was two artists i wouldn't that is such a fascinating discussion of copyright though because the game is not the actual person it's somebody is like so that's where it gets hairy yeah yeah 100 because i feel like you're showing the game live on tv that's just him he shouldn't have to hide his arm because that's like something he paid to have done but when somebody is creating an avatar and it's that image like I, i i do feel like that does complicate the heck out of that yeah, that's, I, like, that's where I think it gets into it. That's why I asked the question. Yeah. Of the Nike logo. I think also the the unfortunate part about this, I think, to uh, what you're saying, Bill, is I think that the case that's being brought to the jury is a very weak case from what I've read and looked at, yeah. mainly because 
if you look at the tattoos, which I recommend anybody go look at, they're incredibly unoriginal. Yeah. Um, and one of them is in fact based on another design, which would just be, you know, would just be beautiful irony is if the tattoo artist got sued by, oh. <laughs> by the person. It became like a, a centipede of lawsuits. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, and see, that's a, yeah. a slippery slope that tattoo artists who do uh, copies of other people's work yeah. run the risk of copyright infringement. Yeah. So, like, so, like, any photo of LeBron James, in your opinion, just should not exist unless the tattoo artist, so that to tattoo, like, essentially, like the world that you're describing, and I'm not saying it's bad. But in a world where you're a tattoo artist, if you tattoo someone famous, you are set for life. <laughs> <laughs> you should I mean, charge a lot. I mean, it's a legitimate thing. Like you would be. You're gonna but get. And also, if you're famous you and know. you're wearing it, are you having to pay the person because you're showing that image everywhere, even if it's on your body? So then. Right. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a. I think yeah. it's a, It's an unwinnable and ridiculous thing to pursue um, i mean i think your opinion is is that artists deserve to be compensated more for their skill yeah. clearly tattoo artists and i'll say this like a lot of them are doing this you get paid up front like you know if you're if you're tattooing nba players you should be billing nba player prices like mm -hmm. You know, you should be charging up front for that. Hey, I'm aware this is going to end it, end up in a video game. You know, that is maybe the more appropriate. I for think for the very least, be on this. ESPN. Yeah. Hey, look, my artwork is going to be featured on us because, like, residuals when it gets hairy like that. I mean, that's that's pretty difficult. And also, good luck tracking it down. You know, the only um, other thing, I, the only other thing I would say would be cool is if you just like, yeah. It'd be cool if the art, if, I mean, LeBron's not going to go, hey, look, such and such tattooed my arm. So you're never going to get, you're never going to get. Oh, what are you talking about? They, they totally hype up tattoo artists I mean, and stuff. If they, if they reference the person. Yeah. Well, that's free advertising. I mean. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. And like tattoo artists, they, they'll like hype up like rappers. And I mean, like, I'm just talking about like, yeah. like, I'm trying to think of like, like famous because it's so big and like i'm thinking of like the face tattoos that have become popular lately yeah. um i i i hear quite a bit about you know tattoo artists and tattoo artists like bragging about you know high level like clientele that they've gotten and stuff like that you know i i think that there's quite a bit to be said about that if i my was my, my thought is, is if you're going to tattoo somebody famous you have to accept like they're part of the um the public you know the whatever you call it and there's a term for it right it belongs to the pub like oh, when you hear about that with like that used to happen a lot with like um stolen videos and content they would say like the public like as far as like paparazzi goes like the public is entitled to this it's ridiculous but they're a public persona so like you're giving that to them so you should bill for it you know yeah, yeah. i mean it yeah you should build for it but like if i was a tattoo artist and i was tattooing famous people i'd market the hell out of that and they I'd, do oh, i mean I've, yeah. I've, I've definitely seen a like a i follow a lot of tattoo artists and i see them they're really great about showing the work and yeah and talking about it and yeah i mean i'd probably tattoo lebron james for free because of publicity alone you know you yeah, like it, <laughs> Is that gonna be like a stick and poke tattoo, Bill? <laughs> I oh, I, had... I, I left out one thing that Natalie said, and it's important. <laughs> it's it's really important. Mm. I also think it's worth taking this sort of thing to court. It's important to make these sort of precedents clear. So I think that's worth mentioning. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a discussion definitely worth having. Yeah. 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 Um, Do we have any tattoo artists in the audience? I'm just curious. I don't know if we got a tattoo night. But I did um I did a pet portrait one time where in advance the guy was very like very respectful and he asked like knowing I was gonna do it if he could then get it tattooed on him. And he got a really big tattoo artist to then 
do a tattoo of the pet portrait I painted for him. And so that was just like a fun thing to see happen. Well, that's cool. Cassandra, I've never gotten a tattoo because I would keep changing my mind about what I would want. And, and like my drawings, I would like it like one day. And I'd be uh -huh. like, why would I tattoo that on myself, you know? Um, Somebody said a tattoo night is a great idea. I don't know what that even. <laughs> are we are going to tattoo each other. Is that? Or are we going to draw tattooed people? Like, what is that? Like? Yeah, I want to know more. <laughs> but I think John, John, do you have any tattoos? Not opposed to them. I just, yeah. Just, I mean, it's it wasn't a big part of your generation you know nope. not at all yeah i have a little one of a painter's palette oh, oh that's cool nice yeah did you design it i did um i i wish i had designed it better and, and like found a different artist like i know so much more now so i think someday i will go to somebody to kind of like clean it up a bit more um. Yeah, what, I, don't, I don't have tattoo confidence. That's my issue. I don't have the confidence in an idea to keep it on me that long. I've always, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I admire people who have tattoo confidence, so. I also think it hurts too. It, it does hurt, but like it does kind of go, it, I didn't get a huge one, so I didn't have to sit long, but I've heard it can, it starts to go numb after a while, but. Is yeah, that, it definitely hurt. My friend just got a temporary tattoo that lasts like six months. And I was like, now nah, tattoos are just dumb now. They're doing six month tattoos, like doesn't even have the baggage, you know? It's not even scary anymore. <laughs> so what do you do for a tattoo that lasts six months? I don't even understand how that works. I don't know. I just was kind of like, just get a tat. Like I was like, come on. It used to be like, like I remember when I was in grade school, I mean, <laughs> this is so bad, but people with tattoos, because I went to a Catholic school, I mean, they were pariahs. Like it was like, it was like, you're a bad boy if you get a tattoo. Oh, oh and, when I got oh my, my tattoo, God. I was, I was, um, I was young. I was like only three years out of college, but yeah. my grandma immediately sent me an article that people with tattoos are more likely to live lives of crime. Like it was hilarious. <laughs> and I was like, grandma, I'm so sorry. It's already, it's too late. It's done. <laughs> grandma, I'm already an artist. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. How has your life of crime been, Cassandra? Yeah. You know, I'm just so hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the painter's that's palette. People, yeah. That's how people know me. So when you're when you're out committing crime, um, who watches the kids? You know, I found this very nice tattooed fella to watch the kids while <laughs> yeah. I go live my life of crime. Yeah, a lot of people don't know this, but the painter's palette tattoo is actually on your cheek, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's actually my neck. Yeah. yeah it's a, and it's pretty big for a painter's palette. It's like true to life, you know? It's, it, <laughs> It's actually the size. They just traced a painter's palette. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. I think we're almost done with my news segment. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Are you going to do the animal news I sent you last week? Oh my gosh, Cassandra. I'm so sorry. I, I will see if I can grab it. <laughs> because that is animal news. Animal news. Oh no. Do you guys want to talk about technique while I pull up more animal news? Anybody want to? Sandra, somebody asked about uh, materials you're using tonight. Oh, um, yeah, I uh, some classy cardboard that I I have lying around, and I treat it with GAC 100, which is just like a clear acrylic polymer, and it seals the board so that the painting sits right on top of it, and then I paint acrylic on top. And it's hilarious, the stack of paintings I have by this point. Cassandra, are your paintings the ones that you do for gallery shows? Is it also on cardboard? Or is it, is that no, I do those on Mace Night. Somebody posted asking about it today, asking on, on Facebook, asking if there was an artist who did basically turned 
celebrities into animals and I almost forwarded it to you. It's not what you do, but um, I thought you would have gotten a kick out of it. Oh yeah, well, it's really funny because I have this really great idea for my next painting and it's going to be taking a character that is known and painting it as an animal, like as I see it. I hope the person, the actress is not offended with my interpretation, but I'm highly entertained to start this one. Okay. <laughs> Cassandra's animal news story. Uh, we didn't get any, uh, we got one aquatic animal uh, submitted for tonight, but unfortunately we're not drawing it. <laughs> so sorry. Um, but uh, a whopping 50 foot megalodon shape detected by Atlantic Ocean Scanner. <laughs> <laughs> an, un an, an underwater scanner in Atlantic picked up a 50 foot long shape momentarily igniting a glimmer of hope that the infamous megalodon may not in fact be extinct i don't know who wants it to be i i like sharks but too big too big in my opinion yeah 50 feet that's <laughs> a lot of shark the atlantic shark institute shared the photo on their instagram page uh asking does the meg exist uh Judging by the shape, uh, it was too big to be a great white with the longest ever recorded uh, being 20 feet, weighing in at 4,500 pounds. Uh, this discovery uh, is more than twice that length, suggesting a weight of about 40 tons. Does the Megalodon exist? <laughs> is it out there? We know... What what's the thing about the ocean? We know less than one percent of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. But did you did you read that they said what it is? Oh, I didn't get that far. Yeah. What yeah. is it? It's a school of fish. It's like a school of mackerel. <laughs> that was like that happened to be a shape like a shark. So I love that they got all excited and they took pictures and they were all on a oh boat being like, God. oh my gosh, could this be a megalodon? And they got all excited and they look closer and they're like, oh, it's mackerel. For real though, Cassandra, this is why news is having a rough go of it because that's <laughs> ridiculous. I know. Well, that's why I thought it was so funny. I was laughing so hard. Oh my hard. God, that's just, hilarious. I fell for the clickbait. Yeah, I, I mean, I did too because I read it, but I like was highly entertained and I was like, I love that like they pumped it up. Like, could it be a Megalodon? No, it's mackerel. They, they knew what they were doing. Oh, totally. They were like, they buried it. I'm still scrolling and it's still about, Meg it's all about Megalodon. I haven't gotten to the fish <laughs> yet. They know exactly what they're doing. This is, <laughs> this is full blown megalodon fake news <laughs> hashtag you're welcome Mackle. yeah yeah oh man just spreading disinformation about megalodons <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i read the news similar to most people's grandfathers now <laughs> just as like i read the headline the first three paragraphs and then i told like eight people <laughs> 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 you know what i'm saying how many people you think have read that article and been like hey man i heard megalodon maybe still out there dude megalodon nobody's like do you know that there's <laughs> schools of mackerel that are just roaming around yeah schools of mackerel that are megalodon shaped yeah that's pretty good i'm sorry i butchered your news story no, 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 no. It made it even better because I feel like it was like a long but um ching mackerel. Yeah, you were kind of just waiting to be like, okay, Timmy, so when are you gonna tell them the rest of the story? <laughs> yeah. That's always my favorite with uh there was that move that Matt Damon movie, The Informant, where he's a compulsive liar and he lies about uh they're like, everybody thought you were an orphan, and he's like. I only told one person I wasn't, I was an orphan and they told everybody. <laughs> that was his, he's just like, you That's know, I only, I only lied one time. Um, like, yes, I did that, but. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I try to read whole articles, but oof, it's, as you can see, even when it really counts, I don't. 
Well, no, I think it just goes to show like the articles I'm reading that I get excited about are nonsense. Like that would have been yeah. on the National Acquires, Inquirer's like front cover, Megalodon sighting. And then you have to like flip five pages in and be like, mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> mackerel. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I've, I've heard people talk about like, like what would happen to the History Channel if they found Bigfoot, you know? <laughs> That whole channel is gone. There's just going to be World War II documentaries, and that's it. Did you ever see the movie um, The Invention of Lying? Yeah, the Ricky Gervais, yeah. Yeah, where the, basically the, the entertainment was was writers reading history out of right, yeah. history books. <laughs> yeah. And then he comes along and starts inventing. Yeah. Anyways, time. everybody, that is the end of news. Um, and it's also the end of our second post. So please uh, post your work to Instagram uh, using hashtag illustration isolation and at visual arts passage. We're going to check it out at the end of the night. Um, if my phone lets me, uh, we're going to do that. Um, sorry, everybody, you stuck with me flipping through images again. You don't get John tonight. Uh, but uh, yeah. I don't think I can handle, I can't handle anything tonight. Hey, I'm impressed you're here, man. You, you're doing great. I decided the one thing you can't do with COVID is draw. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, yeah, everything is just kind of like molasses for a little bit. How's everybody? I, I, at some point, I want I want feedback on news. If everybody likes news, we're going to continue it. If if nobody likes news, we're we're going to shut that thing down so fast. <laughs> Is everybody uh, excited about megalodons? Please yeah. tell us. I kind of like news. I kind of like news. I really like ridiculous news. I feel like we need that. All right. Well, we'll keep it up. I, I'm going to try to keep it art focused, but. <laughs> Be totally honest. Uh, it's hard. It's a lot of reading to find to find a good art news story that also won't upset everyone. It's <laughs> 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 like really hard, you know. Like even like the tattoo one, you're like, mm, "Am I open up a can of worms?" No, that was a really good discussion about copyright. I, I actually yeah, think that that was a smart fun. discussion. It's fun. Well. Um, my you know what i'm giving you is like megalodon fake news so you're welcome <laughs> well you know what going forward i'll try to theme it with one thoughtful story where it it has like an educational conversation and one that we will call national inquirer news <laughs> oh yes <laughs> like uh just uh, yeah click, we'll call it clickbait <laughs> <laughs> i like it i like it yeah. a lot yeah the, the clickbait, that's the whole segment. Clickbait, stuff that got me to click on it this week. Um, yeah, all right. So I hope everybody's ready for trivia because we can uh, take a break or we can jump right into it. Yeah, let's go, uh, let me switch cardboard. John, are you, are, are you tackling your second uh, animal tonight? Yeah, but I'm, I'm having issues. That's a tough one to draw. You know what's well, what's keep, hard about it? I keep thinking, well, it, it's it's tricky with the values, and I keep drawing it and then knocking it back and trying to bring it back and um, to do what I what it's doing in the photo. I know I have to put the background in, and yeah, I don't want to. This cat looks pretty evil, though. I love it. Our one earlier, too, had like had kind of a dark look about it that was delightful. We actually got some questions, and I'm going to dig into them just so we can have a break from me talking. Um, let me see here. Oh, my God. Most of the questions are just like about what you do with a black cat. <laughs> uh, let's see here let's see here
okay, literally all the questions that I thought I was going to ask are all about uh, um, superstition. So <laughs> please use the Q&A for cues. <laughs> um, yeah, no, if anybody has any technical questions, please uh, post them and uh, I'll interrupt our, uh, our trivia. So last, last time we did trivia, I got pretty flustered. Um, not gonna lie, got a, I got a little worked up. <laughs> AKA entertaining. I thought it just yeah, added to and, the flavor. Yeah. All right. And you can also, you, you should be able to post your work to Discord now, especially if you have the illustration, by the way, just if you want your images to go there. Um, but uh, for trivia tonight, we are going to have a system for answering the question. It's going to be, you have to say buzz or something. Maybe say, yeah, I think we're gonna say buzz, like buzzer, right? Mm -hmm. And that will mean you get to answer the question. All right, we're doing individual teams. So no, we're not, no teams, it's every uh, man and woman for himself and the discord, uh, Discord people are going to be on one team. So, yeah, no, that's the system, and I'm confident in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Animal trivia. <laughs> Here we go. For our first question What rodent can go its entire life without water? A, a pig rat. B, a fancy rat. Three, a slender rat. And four, a kangaroo rat. Beep. Which one? Beep, beep, or buzz. I, I heard Bill first. I'm going to say kangaroo rat. Kangaroo rat is correct. Yep. A kangaroo rat. Uh, they have pouches, but they're not for carrying babies. The pouches are on the outside of their cheeks which is weird, and are used for carrying seeds back to their burrows. They don't sweat or pant like other animals to keep cool uh, because that would cause them to lose water and they can live up to two to five years. No water, which Damn. is, which is my, my thing with water as well. <laughs> 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 yeah, somebody guessed fancy rat. No. Do you know how I knew that, Timmy? How did you know that? When I was a teenager, I lived in Livermore and would regularly visit the Lawrence Livermore Lab Visitor Center. And there was a kangaroo rat before my dad worked at the Livermore Labs. Yeah. And I and there was a kangaroo rat there. And uh, it was the it was the cutest little thing, you know. I just so I read all about it. And somehow oh, I was gonna say, and were you like, where's its water? And they're like, don't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's amazing. But I bet they really do better when you give them water. <laughs> Oh, probably yeah. do yeah <laughs> yeah i don't want to know about that study <laughs> right <laughs> i've yeah. definitely done a painting of a kangaroo rat or a jerboa yeah or jerboa somebody jerboa. just posted, somebody just a lot elena just posted a jerboa in the chat Love yeah because they're so cute all right question number two everybody ready mm -hmm. what percent of dogs sleep in their owner's bed Oh. This is not multiple choice. It's not multiple choice. Okay. Yeah. Beep. All right. Beer, Bill, Bill, what's your guess? I'm going to say uh, 60%. I think everybody can guess. John, Cassandra, you got to want to guess? Want to weigh I'm going to say 50%. Yeah, we're going to do prices right rules. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 30. 30? Okay. Um, nearly half of dogs sleep in their owner's bed. So yeah. I'm gonna give it to Cassandra. Awesome. Yeah, um, 60 per, 62% of small dogs, 41% of medium dogs, and 30% of large dogs. John, does Finn sleep in the bed? Nope. Mm. Sleeps in a bed right next to our bed. Yeah. Our dogs do not, we do not have all three dogs in our bed. 
Yeah, my dog sleeps next to the bed in a bed. Yeah. All right. Okay. Question number three. Cats are believed to be the only mammals that don't taste what? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a funny yeah, you're gonna get a point just for being funny <laughs> does anybody have any other others or any other guesses sweet other than, what's that sweet yes and cats cannot taste sweetness all right this I'm one my cat's <laughs> yeah but i still like john's answer better <laughs> yeah john you get a point <laughs> John gets a point for that one. <laughs> All right. This one is a, is a hard one uh, because there's like some new, you really got to listen to the question. What is the maximum a cat can fall with little to no injuries? Sorry, what was the beginning of the question? I was wondering. Okay. What is the maximum a cat can fall with little to no injuries? 30 stories. Bill, anybody want to chime in? I think everybody can get a guess in. 50 feet. 50 feet? I'm going to, I'm going to stay, say two stories. Two stories. Okay. So it's the maximum a cat can fall with no injuries. Oh, there, is some, yeah. there is some nuance to the question, though. It's not a record holder. It's just what's the maximum? The maximum they can fall is as far as 20 stories, over 200 feet. Oh my they'll God. survive with little to no injury. I knew I now, was close. Now, the nuance to this, though, is there's a lot to do with, uh, there is a danger zone below that that is actually very dangerous if they fall. So cats that fall between five and nine stories are the most at risk. And this has a lot to do with terminal velocity. Mm -hmm. uh, they observed that after nine stories, cat reach an equilibrium between the pull of gravity and wind resistance, and they they go into cruising speed. <laughs> As the sensation of velocity declines, they relax and move into flying squirrel mode. They have a relatively large surface area in proportion to their weight as a mammal, thus reducing the force at which they hit the pavement. And in New York City, this happens a lot. And people have described what happens when they, you know, skyscraper cats fall. And people say they bounce. And they'll bounce like five, six feet and then just like walk around. They just go back to their business. So that's crazy. Yeah. Um, but that, that five to nine stories, if you're ever looking for an apartment and you have a cat, you don't want the five to nine. Avoid and just be like 10, please. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see like a Mark Roper's squirrel obstacle course? Because he kind of goes into the terminal velocity of like animals, like cats and squirrels and what they could do. Really? No. Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard comedians, a comedian that I really like talk about, remember when news was just that squirrel that was on the like yes, water geez. skiing? <laughs> He's like, you remember that? That was that was when the news was great. It's <laughs> like, look at this squirrel hop on a little speedboat. <laughs> yeah, those days are over. Uh, all right, this is our last question for trivia night. What manipulative strategy do house trained cats allegedly use to gain the attention of humans that feral cats do not? Oh, Buzz. Let's hear it. Meowing. Yes. Meowing. Uh, from, I don't know what website this was from. Catnews.net, probably. <laughs> Home <laughs> suggests cats may be cashing in on humans' naturally nurturing responses to a baby's cry. Previous studies have shown that cats' embedded cry shares a similar frequency. Um, yeah, so they cry like babies to get our attention to, yep. to them. And apparently they say that cat, feral cats kind of meow, but like it's really unusual. 
and they don't, I don't know. And they were like, but people will click on the story if we say it's like babies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming, yeah, so. John, your drawing is beautiful, by the way. Oh God, it's awful. I, no, I, I love the light on the head. And, I, I keep rubbing it out. I can't, I can't concentrate. Yeah. The only thing I can do today really well is sweat. And I'm. Oh, we need you to get like a nice 1980s haircloth, like headband, you know, sweatband. <laughs> is, this, is this the COVID sweats, John? This is the COVID sweats. Oh man. Uh, I got it big time tonight. Ugh. Sorry to hear that. I like your cat, though. It's I looking... know. The cat does look really good. Bill's right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Bill, I also think your rat is looking fantastic. Oh, thanks. Yeah, the, the proportions are a little off. He's, uh, he, she, it's a little more forward. And... But do barbecue. Bill, that cat story does make sense to me now because it makes sense that why you sometimes use the same frequency as a baby to get my attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's super effective. It is funny that there is a, uh, a bell curve for the baby cry and how it works. <laughs> you do have to be cute. <laughs> What are you trying to say there? Well, no, Bill, it's working great for you. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's working, right? It's working, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, um, I, I, I love the trivia. I, I actually like the way you do the trivia. This, this. Oh, man, that rat. Oof, looking good. Is it? What's what's the name of the rat again? Something bar barbecue. Duke, Duke barbecue. Duke Duke BBQ. Duke BBQ. This is Elena's rat, right? Do you say barbecue or BBQ? BBQ. It's BBQ, but I was assuming it was barbecue. Yeah. Yeah, Elena says they say barbecue. I'll tell you what. One of the things that's really funny to me because I've always always had dogs, always had a lot, like I grew up in a household that had like five dogs at all times. And our dog's names always ended in a vowel. And the name was always something that you could yell when they ran away to get them, right? Like you'd go through a neighborhood and you yell it and it'd be like a really good name to yell. Um, it couldn't be like, you couldn't like scream princess, you know? Like that's a hard thing I think to yell when you're out at like 3 a.m. looking for your lost dog. A lot of artists naming their dogs really long names. <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was really interesting. A lot of wild names, some really good ones. <laughs> Definitely not uh, ranking on the yellability scale, you know. They're not, they're they're not trying it out and thinking it through. Yeah, I mean that was I mean it's an absurd rule that we all had, but my dad would always be like, "Oh, you can't name it." You can't name it. He'd be like, you can't name it Duke Barbecue because what are you gonna? How are you gonna yell that? <laughs> like, maybe we could name it something without having to imagine how we're gonna yell it. <laughs> I gotta tell you, my brother did not think it through. I feel like I told you this last pet night, but he and his wife had named their dog Peter Jennings as an homage to the former <laughs> Peter Jennings, and then they would be like, Peter Jennings, don't pee on that. And like, they would get the weirdest Jeez. looks. And so they realized that that was not gonna work. So they kind of just started calling him PJ instead. Yeah, I, I have been told with like, when I named my dog Echo, and Echo is uh, other than Echo's uh, deep hatred for John, um, Echo is, Echo is, the smartest dog I've ever met. And I'm not, it's not a bias thing. It's, it's frustrating how smart she is. Um, I think that she understands verb tenses. Like she's that smart. <laughs> and like, 
somebody told me like, if you name your dog, if the dog's name has really strong consonants and ends with a vowel, they can discern those words uh, from other words in your language and they'll pick up on their name faster and it becomes like a better cue, a cueing term for them. And uh, so I've always like followed that. But Peter Jennings is pretty funny too. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. Well, and it's continued because um, yeah. like their new dog is Frank Sinatra. Um, oh, I thought you were gonna say like Brian Williams and they're just like newscasters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this one's Frank Sinatra. Reporters. Frank Sinatra. Frank. It's a really, yeah. really cute dog too. So it's funny. Do they sometimes had, call him the German? Yeah. <laughs> my my dad had a friend who uh like raised horses and whenever he bought an animal or like got a dog or any animal any animal he took into his home he named it after the person who gave him the animal which is a hilarious tradition <laughs> so he had a he had a dog named tim and like <laughs> You know, these animals with human names, but they were all like the names of his friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, my other brother, he keeps adopting dogs, but he adopted one named Charlie and my other brother's named Charlie. And so for years he would say, oh, you wouldn't believe what Charlie would do. We'd always go Charlie the dog or Charlie the, the human. And he would get so annoyed. He was like, of course, Charlie the dog. And we're like, okay. And he'd start another tra Charlie story. And we'd be like, Charlie the dog or Charlie the human? And it would drive him nuts. <laughs> Charlie the dog or Charlie the human. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Do you guys have strategies for like, when you, as you're drawing these animals, like, do you exaggerate some of the same features that you would exaggerate for a person? Like ears, nose, eyes, or? I thought about that on the first one. Um, I sort of, I wanted to exaggerate the eyes. Um, it would be the equivalent of drawing like Peter Lorre. Or, you know, what's the girl from uh, uh, Queen's Gambit? It's the, kind of the heart-shaped head. Oh, yeah. I can't remember her name, but I'm picturing her face. Yeah. We all know who you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. You know, just exaggerate. She has eyes of a manga character. Yeah. I saw her recently in the movie that Last Night in Soho. Did you guys see that movie? I love Edgar Wright. So I like. Oh, yeah. Was a fan, but did you like it? Well, I really enjoyed like the visuals of it. Okay, yeah, that's kind of fun. That's another segment. We do our weekly rack. We do one rack. That's a that's a segment we'll add. That way we don't. That'll be a good one. Would you recommend it? Would you recommend last week and so or last night and solo? Uh, I would, I mean, I enjoyed it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like, I feel like the first three fourths was stronger than the last, but I still really found it fascinating. And I loved the mod 60s kind of yeah. fun vibe, vibe meets like kind of an Alfred Hitchcock thing. Mm. Also, like London 1960s, right? Yeah. Which is like a, a special like that's like a whole other type of 1960s in a way I feel like mm -hmm. stylistically or aesthetically yeah I've been on a 60s music kick lately that's late, a fun one late 60s are very different than the early 60s in terms of music but some of the names of the bands I just you know such interesting names. Um, like, I might be getting this wrong, but like Tommy Jones and the Shondells or something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, how, 
how do you guys feel about bands where it's like it's it's I, I feel like really popular back then especially it's like some dude's first and last name and then just like the rest of the gang yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Gary Puckett and the Union Gap yeah. Tommy James and the Shondells um, there's a lot of them Jack White and the Raconteurs that's yeah. like more modern not really modern but like more recent yeah mm-hmm. Don Fred and his Playboy band yeah Diana Ross and the Supremes. Yep. You know, but there's a lot, there was a lot of, that was kind of a thing, you know, for a while. Well, I think it's one thing if the artist was established first and then expanded on the band versus like other people are carrying the weight too, but they don't get the recognition. Yeah. yeah. But can you, can you imagine like John Lennon and the Beatles? Right. <laughs> I bet somebody pitched it, Bill. <laughs> Paul McCartney would have something to say about that. You know? Yeah. yeah. Y- Yoko pitched it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was like, how about we call it Yoko Ono and the Beatles? <laughs> oh. um, Xander's saying, you mean like Timmy Trayvon and the isolate the Isolationist illustrators. <laughs> we don't say I, we don't say isolationist, Alexander. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Everything boils down to figuring out how it can be more about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Timmy in the drawers. Yep. All right. I'm gonna give a. a 10 minute warning uh, for this last one, I think. Yeah, 10 minutes. I, I got to draw another 10 minutes. We could switch to the next drawing. I, I, I don't, I can't. Just yeah, it says on. Speed Racer Bill, who's like, oh, I'm just going to do six. Huey Lewis in the news, that to me seems like the most insulting one because. It just seems like a throwaway. It's like not even a band. It's just the news. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting the heartbreakers, you know. There's Springsteen and the E Street Band. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the band in, uh, well, Bob Dylan's band didn't even get a name. They were just the band. Um, yeah. Even when they broke out on their own, which was, I thought was really funny. Lyle Lovett and his big band. Yeah. I am finding that like the 60 songs. Do you guys so do you guys have fidelity? Like when you hear a a song and the first person you heard do it, does that sort of set sort of your your taste about that song? Like what do you what you like? You know, or you mean are you inclined to appreciate the first version more than any other version? Yeah. No. Not for me. Okay. Because I, I heard a, like, I like Dusty Springfield has a song, Son of a Preacher Man. Right. Yeah. That's been done okay. by so many people. Yeah. Okay. But Aretha Franklin also did a version of that song. And although I love Aretha Franklin, it's it, the Dusty Springfield version is kind of it for me. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really wild. So, this is this is pretty funny. My uh, sister, who was a, uh, taken into our house when she was much older uh, from Bosnia, and uh, I grew up with her. And uh, she married a guy at one point. She was married to a guy who was very very uh, connected in the music industry, mm-hmm. and um, was working with uh, like a major label. And they got to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, induction event or whatever it's called, right? Yeah. And she um, met uh, Joe Strummer, you know, lead singer of The Clash. Yeah. And they were talking. I mean, she met a lot of people. um, And at her table, she was sitting at the same table as Aretha Franklin. Oh, my gosh. She She has no idea who Aretha Franklin is. (laughs) Um, this is and this is 20 years ago this is a long time ago um uh but 
they have a brief conversation and her husband at the time says he's like listening to her talk with Aretha Franklin. He's just like, Oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. And then they're, they're ending the conversation. And my sister says, well, Aretha, I wish you the best of luck with your career. Oh my gosh. (laughs) You're kidding me. (laughs) You're just like, she probably was like, what the fuck? <laughs> or she's tickled, like, to be so know. recognizable and someone not know who they are. I don't know. My sister probably still doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. <laughs> Jimmy Marsha, my wife, sat next to Pete Townsend for three hours and didn't know who he was. <laughs> wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. Did she talk well, to she him? Knew who, she knew who he was as soon as I said that's Pete Townsend, but she didn't recognize him. I mean, gosh, especially from that era, man, I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to not know what a person looked like. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, now it's so easy. You see a person out in the wild, you Google, you know, you Google mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. and, you know, and I've been in that situation where you're like, I think that's so-and-so. And everybody gets their phone out and they Google them. And then, and then it becomes this like, yeah, I'm like 90% sure. And then if it is that person, you know, they're sitting over there going like, God damn it. They found me. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's funny you say that because when I lived in San Francisco, yeah, I would see well-known people all the time. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I'd see Carlos Santana on the street or Robin Williams or uh, oh, yeah. Danny Glover or whomever. They just, you're like, oh yeah, the Robin Williams came in the comic book shop I, I used to go into and, you know, right. Danny Glover was on the subway, you know, or the the, the underground, you know, the uh, yeah. metro. Robin and, Wood- oh yeah, sorry, go ahead. And no, I'm just, and so like, and Carlos Santana, so like, I'm like, oh yeah, that's Carlos Santana, but nobody else is really, he, he was probably on Hate Street all the time. And so, yeah. After a while, I think people maybe were just like, oh, yeah, there's there's Santana, you know, like, um, but you would just, I, I got used to seeing well-known people in the city. Yeah. Well, that's real talent, big city. I mean, you walk down the streets in New York City, you run into people all the time. Every time I've been there. I, I bumped it. I walked there. right into the uh, politician, John Kerry one day and like he had two security guards we turned the corner i literally ran into the guy and he had two security guards with him and they both realized real quickly it was totally accidental <laughs> but i i really kind of worried about it for a second it was like oh my oh, gosh what did i do he's a very large person he's real tall yeah i never became sort of blase about it i just got you know i got used to it you know, it's just like, um, oh man, I'm obsessed with celebrity. I, I think, and I think a lot of people my age are, cause I, I feel like it was just like a complete collision course with like the internet and people magazine and like all that stuff. I mean, the, the Neil Brennan thing, uh, Neil Brennan has a bit about it where he's like, people act differently around celebrities. They act like everyone like it's like when you're driving and a cop pulls up next to you (laughs) you're trying to act like everything's normal but it's not (laughs) yeah yeah no that's true yeah it kind of for me it kind of depends on the celebrity you know like who yeah um, Um, yeah yeah. of of artists like artists like big name artists who would you be most nervous about meeting well i mean maybe nervous isn't right but like like edgy i met milton glazier and i was a total dork around him he was very nice (laughs) really yeah living i would say probably say brad holland really Um, didn't you meet brad holland didn't you meet brad holland bill no i I never no no 
that's easy to be around. Yeah. Once you get over the fact of, oh my God, that's Brad Holland. He just seems so smart to me. Well, yeah. I remember for the Academy, you know, Francis, I don't think you'd mind me sharing this. When they came in and it was he, Francis Vallejo is there the same weekend, the same week that Bill Sienkiewicz was there and they've never met. And yeah. you know, Francis, Francis was really stoked about, uh, getting to meet Bill Sienkiewicz and I, you know, we do housing for the Academy in dorms. Like they're not like classic dorms. They're like, I mean, they're like dorms. Like they're, I mean, I try to doll them up for our guest readers, but they're dorms and <laughs> <laughs> they're dorms. I'm just going to say what it is. And uh, Francis was like, he made his intro and everything with Bill and like they had a nice moment. And then I was like, Hey Francis, so we've got this housing deal. You're going to be sharing uh, an apartment with Bill Sienkiewicz and he was like what what <laughs> I was like yeah yeah it, I think he was excited then nervous then excited <laughs> totally because <laughs> you're like oh shit now I gotta bring it I gotta I gotta be cool <laughs> I gotta be cool all right be cool be cool be chill don't mess it up yeah, <laughs> yeah. and what's funny is everybody all the team they're always such good sports they're always like yeah, like you're like, how's housing? And I was like, it's fun. It reminds me of college. And it's like, it should. Because <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, because it is. <laughs> you're in a dorm. <laughs> well, I, I felt really grateful when I yeah. came because you guys put me up, you put my son up. Yeah. Um, he got to experience it along with me. Yeah. Um, it was just a, really positive i think the person that i would be most intimidated it would be somewhere it would be gerhardt richter mm. you know, david hockney those are the guys that i, I would be intimidated about maybe yeah i can see i can tell yeah hockney would be up there too Oh, I mean, my first, I remember my first couple of days at Illustration Academy, I was so nervous to talk to all of you because I had seen all your art and I was just like, just trying to be cool and not mess up. That was just my mantra for the first couple of days. I remember being nervous the first time I met um, George um uh, Pratt but he was just such a normal nice down-to-earth guy and funnier than hell you know and just it totally you know that went away very quickly so, I, also, I, I think a lot of people when they first come to the academy are probably real nervous about meeting we're real, real nervous about meeting Gary Kelly yeah mm -hmm. Gary's and Chris Payne and Anita, like, and Mark, like, all everybody. It was, it was like, it's, it's such a concentrated experience. Yeah, I was definitely nervous about meeting your dad. So, doubt about that. Um, um, I was nervous about you meeting him too. So, <laughs> <laughs> sick burn. Oh man, when I've, whenever, oh. oh, that's so fine. Whenever I've been in a situation to like meet a hero, people are always like, just, you know, don't act too gushy or like desperate or, you know, like thirsty, like uh, thirsty or whatever. And that's just like not, that is not built, to, built into me. Mm -mm, me neither i don't do the hard to get i heard a comedian talk about that like people will say like when you're dating play hard to get and he's like if i play hard to get i just don't get got <laughs> 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 it's like nothing happens <laughs> people are like okay <laughs> yeah are we, right? well, we mentioned uh ian this morning uh, ian uh i'm sure intimidates a lot of people just because of the success he's had um 100 percent, but he also like exudes like he makes you feel oh yeah it, it, that's what we were talking about no, I, very few people i've been around that just make you he listens to you he communicates so beautifully and he makes yeah. you feel very welcome yeah he felt really excited to be there and you know he does stuff like that all the time you know 
that's that's what I always like is when when you're with someone and they make you feel like that they wouldn't want to be anywhere else like that's yeah a cool, cool like they're feeling. just as happy to hang out with you as you are with them yeah you can kind of pick up when somebody's like all right I you know what's next right yeah I'm ready to check out but yeah. you're trying to be polite you you see it happening mm -hmm. yeah um looking at looking at your phone oh my god i get so insecure if i'm talking to somebody and they look at their phone or their watch yeah and i'll be like oh okay oh let me let me let you go i'm so Ooh. sorry i i never do that i i do everything i can not to look at my phone or like watch when i'm around people just because i just i'm like nothing communicates i don't want to be here more <laughs> you know Or if I have to, I'll explain why. Like, oh, you know, I have to check, you mm -hmm. know, times on like getting my kids or something. Yeah. I yeah. always try to make sure that people are aware that it's not yeah. them. I literally have something I'm just trying to keep track of. Yeah. I'm oh, an over explainer though, to the point where they're just like, all right, I got it. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay. You can look at your phone. Well, like yeah, Cassandra, yeah. I was ta talking with you about like, and then also there's like text texting with people you really like. Yeah. Totally. Oh my God. Nothing <laughs> freaks me out more than that. Like, texting, oh, especially, if the, especially if the person you're texting is like over the age of, no offense guys, over the age of like 45 and you grow up with texting. Like, because I feel like most people I know, like the text, like since I was in high school, like if you said, okay, or yes that's and that was it that was that like was aggro like, that was super aggressive that was like leave me alone yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah I don't, yeah. Know any of, I don't know any of those rules about i that. mean it just reads different it's just a it's a matter of perspective and i was like 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 so if i'm texting somebody that like i really look up to or or that like i just really want their approval when they do that i just am like oh no i blew it they're annoyed by me. And they're on the other side just being like, oh, got a text from Timmy. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was like telling you guys earlier today, but I was a super dork last night because I met a lady who like she writes for and works for PBS. And so she went, she told me she, like, at first I was like really chill and we were having a nice conversation about it all. And then she told me she works for PBS and I was like, I love PBS. <laughs> and then I just like <laughs> took it to the nth degree. And yeah. I was like, I mean, Great British Break Off started with you guys. I know it's on Netflix now, but then like, ooh, can we talk about murder mysteries and the old Edward Gorey <laughs> opening? And I've been to Edward Gorey's house and we like acted it out and we were like, oh, oh. And I just watched her trying to slowly back away as I was like over enthusiastic, <laughs> idiot. Yeah. Full on fan girl. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. yeah. And it's never over like normal, like cool things. It's just like, oh, can I gush with you about PBS? I'm, I'm not i'm not i'm gonna put a pin in this but everybody start posting your work we're gonna check it out in like three four minutes so post your work to instagram hashtag illustration isolation and add visualized passage start posting now um instagram changed their uh user experience we're not al allowed to view it uh on desktop anymore so i'm gonna do it on my phone and there's a chance you will all see what instagram thinks i want to see <laughs> as my algorithm, ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, terrify you. I know that's everything. It, it is terrifying. Instagram doesn't know me, but they think they know me and it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be like a bunch of like, like it's just like bodybuilders, like to be totally honest. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Timmy, when you do a search, do you ever yeah. do you know that that thing where you see like weird videos that you have no idea why you're seeing those videos on the side? Yeah, it happens with every. I mean, they just. Yeah, like I, I, I will, I'll do a search and I'll get, like the things in the middle, are things that are related to things I've searched for or clicked on. But then there's all these like offshoot videos on the side, and I'm just, I have no yeah. idea. Why. I'm like, it's, it's the weirdest thing. 
you know? Yeah. Go yeah. so ahead. I, I, I feel you. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I love that my spam thinks I am a single old lady because I get like senior perks uh, spam email. <laughs> <laughs> like that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mostly just get hit with like ads for like greenhouses and stuff and just, just like whatever I'm looking for. Like, cause you search stuff on Facebook marketplace and then. Like, yeah. I've, apparently I've looked house. at too many crochet patterns and like baking recipes. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to understand the scam because I know everybody, everybody that participates in this gets hit with it. It'll say DM this photo to like some, like, you know, at art, like, you know, art gallery collection. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. What's up with that? I, I I've, I've meant it's to look weird bots. I don't understand. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I know it's a bot. It's just like, I'm like, what? Like you sing your, I don't understand it. Um, but yeah, so content farming, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, we're Jeff, gonna try it with Jeff the Jeff says it hurts my comment him being 15 months away, but I bet you get way cooler junk mail than I do. Yeah. That's all I'd say on that. All right, I'm gonna let's see <laughs> everybody let's <laughs> let's do this <laughs> okay this is before we i'm going to say this right before we do it it's been nice drawing out with all of you for the last <laughs> 180 episodes uh. <laughs> well actually i want to say this right now everybody thank you for tuning in tonight um if you want to stick around this is the end of the show but if you want to stick around we are going to look at everybody's artwork um one thing I want to add before we start looking at the artwork, we are currently enrolling for the fall semester. It starts October 8th. Um, if you use discount code DRAWMORE, you can save $50 on your first class. Pretty incredible lineup of uh, instructors coming on. We've got um, Keith Knight, who is a cartoonist and uh, is also the co-creator of Hulu's Woke. Tara, oh, cool. Whitlat Tara Whitlatch, who's a creature designer. Uh, Famously known for designing Jar Jar Binks and many other Star Wars. Yeah, creature uh, designer extraordinaire. Yeah. Um, Grace Liu, another incredible uh, creature designer. Um, and uh, Gil Ashby, uh, comic book artist uh, with DC Comics. And uh, Sam Hogg, another uh, uh, character creature designer. Sam's worked with Blizzard on the Diablo games. Just an incredible artist. Uh, so check it out. Go to the website. Um, let us know if you have any questions. We are expecting classes to sell out this semester. And uh, so thanks for tuning in. If you want to check out the artwork, we're going to start streaming now. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 All right. Mm, you're right. So Just, be cool. Just be cool. Just be Just cool. cool. <laughs> Just be cool. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, good. We're, we're looking at animals. <laughs> we're looking at animals. All right. I love it. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. Yes. What a great. You know, Katie. Effect. That's awesome. <laughs> love it. Great. Oh, That's yes. good. How's this looking for you guys? Everybody? Oh, it's great. great. Looking good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We weren't able to test it before the stream, so this is good. That's terrific. <laughs> Where'd you go, Corey? That's oh, fun. I love that. That's, That's fun. Cool. Oh, Corey. Oh, man. So this is great. Fun. Ooh, great job. <laughs> yes. Elena, that's awesome. Oh, Elena, Elena's had practice growing great that. Great job, map. Elena. I'm liking Duke. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, Ooh that is lovely. beautiful. Some fantastic choices there. On nice the ears, love the mm -hmm. ears. <laughs> mm, these make me. These all make me happy. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. that's great. So good. Well, that's fun. Beautiful silhouette. Thanks, Leslie. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's I great. That. It's like pixel. That belly so well. Yep. Mmm, so simple, mm -hmm. but so good. Yes. Oh, that's great. Ooh, that's cool. Very nice. It's a little more sinister. <laughs> so <weird. laughs> Love it. Looks looks humanized. Ooh, good job, Nicole. Jeez. Wow. Oh, cool. oh that's Perfect. great. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's fun. I knew who, I knew who that one was. Beautiful, Gary. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. The hand. I love the hands. Hand, that hand looks extra tight. <laughs> Fresh it on the face. That's good. Nice, Gary. Nice, Gary. Yeah. Really Love nice. it. That rat is so cute. I didn't think I liked rats, but that rat's really cute. Oh, that, that's, that's great. So good, Gary. Very nice. Oh, nice. nice, Julian. Oh, I love uh, the strokes on that. Yeah, really nice. That's beautiful watercolor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, that's so great. <laughs> You got the expression so well. <laughs> Thanks, wow. Rebecca. It's like Good one. you look into its eyes, it looks like a human. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like there's a person trapped in that dog. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, man. Well, that's Charlotte. So that's uh, her dog is the first one. Nice, Hi, Charlotte. Girl. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's great. I love that you added a porcupine. Gerbil. That was a gerbil. Uh, oh, that was a gerbil. A guinea pig. Yeah. A guinea pig that was, uh, In a sorry, did not make the cut, but a great submission. I'm glad that you still drew it. There's always a possibility next week. Yeah. There's always a possibility for next week. Yeah. <laughs> and please keep sending photo reference. Yeah, keep oh, sending them in. I know. Yeah, because these are so mm -hmm. fun. I know my mom, my mom was upset she didn't submit, so she's going to submit this week, so. <laughs> she doesn't have many animals, does oh, she? Oh, that's so great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. She's got a, a blind Aussie that follows her everywhere through the house. Oh. Really cute. Oh, that's great. That's tiny. Yeah, that is. <laughs> how old is nutella yeah i do want to know that xander how old is nutella yeah i'm gonna be upset if you say like one <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man that's great nice just, yeah. love it <laughs> I love, you. love I that, love that, you that rat too. is so good i love the rat's hands yes rat's arms. <laughs> this is great oh, that's cool <laughs> I like that. That's great. So fun. Rat's my favorite. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's really Frenchie too. Frenchies are pretty cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, I love that. Nice, Kathy. Yeah, Kathy. Great job. Really beautiful. Oh, I love it. Wow, that's great nice. shapes for your shadow. It's lovely. That is, that is very nice. <laughs> so exactly. Ooh. Dang, AJ. Very nice. That's, that's so, so good. good. That so looks good. like yeah, that's very dramatic. <laughs> yes. Dean Cat. Yeah. 
that it looks like it's out of a movie <laughs> you know oh, like that felicity. like apocalypse now or something but with a cat <laughs> really, great that, job yeah, felicity really oh felicity that's awesome yeah that is fun yeah oh, <laughs> oh yes oh my gosh jeff <laughs> uh, nice good job we've drawn a frenchie in here before haven't we I yeah. don't think so. Well, it wasn't they? a Frenchie, but it was a, it, no, it was a, um, um, Chihuahua. It had the big ears. Um, yeah. yeah. It was a Chihuahua. <laughs> These are so good. Wow. Good job. Oh, sorry. That's nice. Trying to go slow. I swear. These are great. You're doing a great job, Timmy. Brian, I'm trying so hard. I practiced. Practice. Practice. <laughs> practice. I, I sat here earlier and I was like, got to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> These are wonderful. Oh, I, like, I like that. That's very fresh. It's a fun piece. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's <laughs> fun. so fun, Marcy. Gosh, I love it. Spaghetti and sauerkraut. <laughs> oh, nice shape. Oh. Yeah, really nice. And, uh, I like Nutella as a name. Ooh, very nice. Really nice. Really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many does how many does he do? It's wild. He does like seven or eight every week. It oh, blows man. my mind. It's like bat dog here. <laughs> Love it. Quartz kitten art with the dog tonight treats please fun. oh that's great <laughs> <laughs> yes cool pets <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love that you did that oh, that's a nice drawing nice thank you nanny mm. nice. doesn't that cat look sad that's cool that's so cool it looks right. like it's delivering bad news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, nice. Man, everyone is so I feel cool like everybody today. nailed the lighting on that. Yeah. That's the photo. Okay. Wow. Love it. Chloe. So fun. Oh, it's cute. Really cute. <laughs> That's great. Oh, that's delightful. <laughs> that's Ooh. nice. I like the wow. color a lot. Great job. <laughs> a lot of wild interpretations in these things. It's all over the place. It's cool. Yeah. That's what makes it so fun. Oh, I love that <laughs> face. <laughs> what a great face. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Good job. Mm -hmm. Great job. Oh, I love that furrowed brow there. Uh huh. Oh, that's cute. Oh, really great. Love it. Nice. <laughs> Learning to draw. Great one. Awesome. Oh, I love Keep that. drawing with us. Love it. Great you job. did better than I did tonight. Good job. I love mm. it. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Love it. Oh, love it. Fun. First time painting a dog. Glad Great to. Great job. Thank you Great for job. trying. So glad you're here. Oh, that's <laughs> Dang, Felicity. I knew that was Felicity's. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, nice. Oh, Hanging out good. together. <laughs> <laughs> These all just make me smile. Thank Love you, it. everyone. Man. Oh, that's fantastic. I haven't seen this this Eon's junk. I love Eon's junk. Ah, so great. And that, that blue outline is just yeah. terrific. Primo. Eon's junk. Keep drawing with us. You disappear mm -hmm. for a long time sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> we miss you. We notice. <laughs> Beautiful. That's, that's cool. awesome. Ooh. 
Awesome. That's <laughs> mercy. <laughs> Love the and shape I can't that help I you but want to read what's behind the dog at the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh, that is adorable. Yes. Nice, Karen. <laughs> 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 that cat looks like it's plotting things. Yep. They all do. They all do. It's a cat. Of course it yeah. is. It just out. killed. It just killed something. Yeah. For fun. It's trying to for figure fun. out what it's going to kill next. Yeah. It's but, <laughs> but feels pretty while it does it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to be it? Yeah. <laughs> That's mm, fun. That is darling. I oh, love that one. Nice. nice. Really nice. Oh, that's cute. Nice, Elena. It is cute. Very good. That's so nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> love that it. Rat is so I great. Love it. Yeah, it wants to, how, who can resist resist this rat? Oh, great job, Elena. Your this is your 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 rat. He's <laughs> a star tonight. Really is. Yeah. Duke Barbecue. <laughs> Name is Up in Lights. <laughs> That's fun. Oh, I love it. That's a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh. Yes, good job. This is, oh man, the oh. ears. The ears, yes. they look like antennas. That's nice. It's really fun. Yeah. Oh, that's great too. That's her dog. You better do a good job, Charlotte. <laughs> nice, AJ. That's nice, awesome. AJ. Viper. Viper. Oh, great. Oh. <laughs> yes. The little paw shadows are brilliant. Mm -hmm. Good job. Oh, I love that. That's cute. It's like a little puppy. Mm -hmm. You got that jade color on the eyes. Lovely. Isn't that interesting that like some of them look like dog dog and then some of them look like puppy dog and you're like, what? What makes it mm -hmm. it's the essence of a puppy? Yeah. Exaggeration of the larger ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bigger head. Eyes That's a little closer to the nose. John's That's like, cool. I can tell you. I can tell you exactly what makes it look yeah. like a puppy. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> He's broke it down for you there. Yeah. Milk <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, nice. I love it. <laughs> oh, I love that the ear goes to the other page of yeah, it. The, yeah. Yes. Uh, that wow. Cool. That's really nice. Damn. That's phenomenal. I love, I love the printout. Yeah. <laughs> Just make it black and white next it time. It is the way. Like, nice yeah. drawing. French Bulldog Piper. Great job. There we go. All right. What a night. Yeah, very fun night, everybody. So much Thank fun. Thank you, everyone. Wonderful time. Yeah. Um, uh, please join our Discord server. If, uh, if you haven't already, you can chat, post your artwork during the week. Um, and also, it is where we will be collecting more um, photos. You can also like message it to just get it to us however you want. Get your photos to us. Um, and, uh, we're going to do pet week again next week. I think that's the plan. So, um, thank you all for tuning in. That was great. Had really so much fun. fun. Night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Cassandra. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, John. Uh, thank yeah. you, Timmy. Enroll for fall semester. Do it. Don't sleep on it. Yeah. yeah if, you're I not, think if, if you're not sure about it, this is what I rec. Message anyone who has taken our classes and ask them about it. Mm. Highly that's, recommend. That's a, that's a good thing. Yeah. Serious. Guarantee it. If you're unsure about it, message someone in the cert. Join our Discord server. Message somebody that's been in a class with us, and they will tell you what's up. And you won't have to talk with me. So, yeah. But thank you everybody for joining. Very fun night. Thanks so thank much. Thank you. Everybody. Good luck with the sweats, John. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go sweat some more. All right. Bye. I'm gonna take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> bye.